Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make what we call a ballyhoo rig. A ballyhoo, for those not in the know, is something known in other parts of the world as a half beak, or in Africa, a chachungi, which is a small fish about yay big, doesn't grow more than about four to eight ounces, but it has half a beak. One beak on the bottom like a garfish, but no beak on the top. It's a great bait for trolling. It can account for some pretty big fish, sailfish, tuna, wahoo, oh, loads and loads of fish. But if you're pulling baits along the surface of a boat, trolling behind a boat in blue water, you can be sure what we know the razor gang has is gonna be not far behind. Barracuda, kingfish, wahoo, Spanish mackerel, stuffed with teeth. And for that reason, you're gonna be used, really, you couldn't, you couldn't be using cable, you should be using single strand wire because it cuts through the water nice and clean. You're pulling through beautiful clear water. You don't want them seeing anything of the leader. If you have a big cabled leader, they might just see it, they might just shy away. I know, I've tried it, I've seen it happen. Single strand is a way to go. Ballyhoo is the rig. Dead easy to tie what we call a haywire twist. I'll show you now. Now single strand wire can come in really thick strengths like this stainless wire. This is called magnum wire. I mean, that is 315 pound test there. That I'll be using should I want for really big sharks and or marlin. If you want really light wire, you can go down here. This is 17 kilos, very, very fine. Again, it's, it's stainless. That I'll be using, say, flats fishing, shallow water, off piers, somewhere like that, where you're gonna get barracuda coming in. And that's 34 pound breaking strain. But for general trolling, something like number 10 wire would be a good average. This is number 10 wire here. Just pops out of the coil. This is stainless. Okay, that's about 130 odd pound test. This particular, there's loads of different makes out there. These are just three that I bought in tackle shops there. One, two, three, different types of wire. And they're very good for kinking up and making into the hay wire twist. As for hooks, I happen to be using, this particular one is a Mustad. It's a 7694, the model. It's a 60, which would be about roughly the average for what I'd be trolling. But what you might notice, if the camera can pick it up, it's got what's called a needle eye. It's not a circular eye. It is literally like the eye of a needle. This particular pattern, the hook point, if I show it that way, is curving in slightly. It's not offset. You don't want an offset hook because an offset hook will spin or has a chance of spinning. You want one that's set straight like that. So there you go, there's variety of patterns out there. That's the one I'm gonna be using. And then I've got myself some single strand, very fine wire. You can buy copper wire, which is soft and bends. This is for whipping the bait on the hook. And that basically is it. Should you want an egg sinker, you can fit an egg sinker as well. Let's do the basic surface trolling rig. Oh, and of course you're gonna need pliers, fishing pliers, hip pliers, cutters, that type of thing. Right, on with the binoculars. I'm gonna use for this one number 10 wire. I'm gonna want, let's say, I suppose when you're trolling from a boat, I'm happy with about six feet. Now some guys make, you know, a lot longer ones. Generally, if you go fishing on a charter boat, if you're going abroad and they're specializing in these rigs, they're gonna be making their own leaders for that particular area they're fishing. Now I'm gonna go for six and a bit feet. Pull it off, it's single strand, it should go snip like this. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to roll that over, leaving myself, this is to make the loop to go onto your fishing rod with a snap swivel. I make an overhand loop like this. I'm gonna close that right down to about there. Hopefully you can see that, pretty sure you can see it. Now, you can do that with your fingers if you're really Mr. Macho with incredibly strong vice-like fingers. But at my age, the vice-like doesn't exist anymore, guys. It's been worn out. Get yourself a pair of flat nose pliers, hip pliers, and just hold that shape there. Now you're gonna spiral this up, like I'm doing at the moment. So you can say one, two, I can count as well, three, Four, okay, now I'm gonna to get to four. You can go more if you want. I'm gonna just bend that straight. What you wanna do when you turn that is to have that 
like this, equidistant. That wire's got to be equidistant so it wraps evenly, okay? Now, I slide up the neck of the pliers to there. I bend it down. I'm going to bend this one dead straight. Then I'm going to do some wraps. Exactly parallel touching turns. Hopefully you can see this. When you do this on a boat, you can spin them up really quickly because you want to catch a fish, don't you? You can pre-make these rigs and whip the baits on and put them in the freezer or the cool chest so they're ready to use, okay? Now you can, you can snip those off, right? If you snip that off there, you will get a tiny, tiny tag end, right? And you'll think it's okay. But when the leader guy comes to grab hold of the leader to slide it up, he, get, he would have the we le leader like this. The weeder? What language do we speak here in England? The leader, and being single strand, he will have gloves on, it will slide down, okay? It is very possible, it might just snag in the tag end there. Now, when I was in Kenya once, I saw a crewman get dragged over the side, he was standing on the back of the swim platform, we were banging out yellowfin tuna like you wouldn't believe, not big fish, 20 pounders, 15, 20 pounders, and I'm not, I kid you not, a 20 pounder pulled so hard, the tag end snagged in his glove, he had mesh gloves, and dragged him off the flying, flying bridge? The swim platform at the back, under the water, his hat floated up. We thought we lost him, because his glove, the tuna was dragging him down. That's a 20 pound tuna. Fortunately, it tore three, and he, and, he, and he got back up, he's okay. But nevertheless, the way to break this off is, I'll put, put that back on there again. All you do is put the pliers right up to the bend, just like this. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm gonna do it slowly, because I, I find it's, it's worth doing. Yes, you can cut it if you want to. Then I'm going to put a kink across in it like this. Okay, so you've got a right angle bend, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to work that bend backwards and forwards like this. One, oh, oh my God, it snapped off. It didn't even do two. Now, what that's done is leave a much, look, a much smoother tag end. Well, it's not even a tag end. Look, look, this is on my fleece. It won't catch, it won't catch. Sometimes when you snip with a pair of snippers, you leave a tag end up. The other tip is, all these small pieces like this, put them where they are gonna be rubbish. Put them in a box, in a bin, on a tray. Don't drop them on the deck, because if you're going around in a hot tropical climate in bare feet, my goodness, you do not want a piece of wire in your foot. So there is the end of the haywire twist, nice and neat. At the other end, I'm gonna put this hook on, which is the needle eye must add hook. Same principle, I go through the needle eye, I make my loop folded back across like this, let's do it all nice and slow, but I want it sort of at about 45 degrees. Now you can use the bend of the hook, there's a bit of tension like I'm doing now, look, watch. Let's put it around that way. See, I use that as a lever and then just wrap about four turns, look, you can do what you want. The chances of it coming unwrapped are extremely, extremely unlikely. What does happen with single wire, occasionally you'll get a big fish and it will kink. I then straighten it like this. I then get my pliers. Look, professional people can do it with their fingers. I do it with the pliers, it's easy. I then do the parallel touching turns. So each one's parallel. I'm guessing about four is enough really. Now, you think, I know what he's gonna do. He's gonna do that little tweaky bit and snag it off again. No, no I'm not. I'm gonna make sure that that loop, the tag end and the hook are all in the same plane, the same vertical plane. Does that make sense? I think you can see it like that there. So it's all in one line. Imagine I'm pulling this through the water. And then I'm just gonna leave that wire post, they call this piece a post, Sticking up about half an inch, I'm going to snag off that there with a little nip of the pliers. Hold it, you won't lose it, it won't go in your foot. Right, so that is the rig there. And I'm going to use, because we don't have too many ballyhoo over here in the UK, I'm going to use a fish called a sprat, just to show you how we rig this on for trolling. And they've been thawed out a while, so they are going to smell. You won't smell them, I'll smell them. Here we have the humble English sprat. I'm only using this, I've thawed them out just to show you 
how this post, the pin works on a bally hook. Ordinarily, it would be a bally hook, a long, narrow bait, which is a bit like a garfish. So listen, here's the post just there. Now that post is going to go through the top, bottom and the top drawer and just stick up there. So you have to measure roughly in the bait, the belly of the bait, where the bend is, is there. I'm going to go in through the belly, dead, dead central like this. Roll it around. This can be so much easier when you're actually fishing. And then, between both jaws there, if I can bring it through the top without spiking my finger, let's try them again. Through both jaws, the post comes out. Do not push too hard and it comes and spikes your finger. Now, if you can't see that, do not worry. Trust me, it's there. It's pushed a scale up. That's why I'm, I'm trying to straighten the wire so you can see it. Now, to hold that on there, that post, you're going to need a length of this wire here. And I'll show you how it's done. So I'm just placing my fine piece of wire there. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm going to whip it backwards and forwards over the jaw of the fish in front and behind that post. Leave yourself a tag in, say it could be under, it could be over. Then do the same, the other side. And bear in mind this is a ballyhoo. And then all you do, let's say I'm going to meet at the bottom, put it nice and tight, put some twists in it to lock it. You can use copper wire in the tackle shops in the same places like the America, you know, you're going to get tubes of uh, copper wire to do this. I've actually stripped out pieces of ordinary cable that do the same, exactly the same thing. Now this one you can snip because it's a soft wire, still keep the taggings out of the way. And there, you have a bait that can be pulled along. Now, bear in mind, I'm only showing you this with a sprat. I'm not showing you it with the prep, you know, the proper bait, which would be either a garfish, uh, a half beak, a ballyhoo, anything with a long, narrow nose that's got quite a bony top of the jaw there that this pin goes through. But you can see that's the principle. What you would do is you can you could thread it through. So effectively, look, that's how it looks like fish in the back. Let's turn that around. You can see. There. That's how it's going to pull nice and straight through the water. And what you can also do, if you want to make it sink, this one could be a skip bait, but you can make it sink by putting a sinker on the bottom of a larger loop. I'll show you what I mean. Now, hopefully you can see this is a sinking one. This will make this bait swim under the surface as you troll it along behind the boat. I've done my haywire twist up here, but then I've left a longer tag end, threaded it back through this egg sinker, and it's important to have that shape as an egg sinker, or even a bullet, a circular one is good. I go back through, then I make my pin there. Hopefully you can see it, it's pointed out with the pliers. There's my pin, and there is my loose wire, which is these fibers here, whipping and holding across the nose of the bait just there. So this one, you can pull, maybe it'll run a foot or so beneath the surface. Now bear in mind, you can use strip baits with this, you can put what's called a hoochie skirt over the front as well. Give it a, a little bit of color, a little bit of flash, a little bit of movement there. It's a plastic skirt. In England, we call them a muppet, but generally they're known as a, a hoochie trolling skirt. Slides down over the top of the egg sinker, covers the egg sinker up, and it flutters like this as it goes along, leaving the tail end. The fish hit it midway, bang, they get the hook. But you know what? There's even an easier way using a different rig that you can buy if you don't want to use this method for trolling. And that is using one of these guys. I'll just put it down there so you can see. And most people will go, what on earth is that? He's got into jewelry now. Okay, now this is called a bead chain rig. It has a ring right at the end here onto which you put your wire, rig your wire. You've got a load of beads here, but they're all revolving. So it's like a giant swivel. So it's great for trolling and it has I'm guessing that's a welded ring fixed on there, a permanent hook. So the same thing, we don't need to, you know, it's rigged the same way. I'll show you, but you don't need the pin. Let's get this. I'm sorry we haven't got the right bait, guys, but this will give you the uh, idea of it. Always flex your baits, even when you get them out of a cooler like this, just to break that uh, rigor mortis up. Now, these beads I'm going to use to whip with that same 
uh, thin wire here. So it's the same principle. So measure your hook where it's going to go. Let's say I want about two beads back. There's the hook where the bend would be about there. So you put it in through the bait, nice and central. Want it to be central. Then bust the bait, just roll the hook around. Bring it out nice and central. And you can always slip it back a tad there. Now generally, with a long fish like a ballyhoo, we'll have a big wide gill cover and you can drop that hook. See, I've just gone underneath the gill cover. And then, let me get a piece of the wire. Here's the wire. Same principle applies, is that you're binding it here. Let's get that back a bit for you. You're binding it around this wire bead. You don't need the single strand yet. You're putting it around the actual bead itself. So let's just get that lined up, say about there. Let's cross it over so it goes over the nose of the bait. Probably the second bead back's about best here. Again, a lot easier to do when you're physically on the fishing boat. Now what a lot of guys do with this, either make a hole or push the end of the wire, like I'm doing, through the eye sockets, which is a good toe point for any fish in front of the eye sockets, okay? Then I'm just gonna whip that around and around that bead there. Both go the same way, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to do it opposed. Do it whichever way you want. You can, you can even double them up as I'm doing now, right? I know it's locked onto the bead and you can push both tag ends through the eye of the bait again, should you so wish. Again, you can buy this copper wake up buy nearly most of this stuff here, somewhere like the States, they've generally, most of the tackle shops that are, are sea based will have all these, this rig and stuff. See, I've gone through the eye again, and then all I do is go around the front beads, finish it off with a couple of turns there, locked into place. There's my tag end, and this is only soft wire. I say they use copper wire generally, because it's very soft. And there you go. That's a fish rigged on a bead chain. Now, at this end, you could still put six feet of wire if you if you wanted, but obviously it's gonna be a big fish, gonna eat his way up here, get past the hook. He's got all the shank of the hook. He's got all these metal beads to chew on. So it's gotta be a big fish to suck it back. My gut feeling is fish that one definitely on wire as well if it's only four or five feet long. So there you go, guys. Two different ways to rig your trolling baits with a hay wire twist. You could use the one with the bead chain there, you can use the one with the egg sinker, you can use, use one without the egg sinker, which we call naked, a naked bait. And then all you do, your rod and reel is here. This comes from your rod top. I still haven't put that clip up there, guys, for those who watch us all the time, to put my fishing line on. Put your snap swivel through that top loop. Obviously, you've uncoiled that lot, haven't you? You're ready to fish. Away you go. Egg sinker, I'd say, kingfish, Wahoo, especially Wahoo could be really good. And the naked one just on either the bead chain or plain naked wire, sailfish, white marlin, that sort of thing. Tuna, definitely yellowfin tuna, blackfin tuna on the troll. Have fun rigging up baits. It is good, especially with your own boat. Get out there, give it a go. And my tip is, if you get the weighted ones like this, don't be afraid to run it a long way back on the shotgun, 30, 40 yards back and forget about it. And the skip baits, the naked baits, run those a bit closer. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Watch out for Mike's channel, the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. And don't forget the free download also of our awesome angler fishing magazine, which incidentally does also have the odd farm and fishing in. I know, because I love it. See you next time. Can we fry these now? Or do we grill them?